Hey, so today I'm going to show you my personal Lightroom workflow. So I'm going to start off by showing you my data management structure. And that is this guy right here. So pretty much how I have it set up is I take the picture, then I import it to my computer, where it also goes in the Lightroom. I have two external hard drives, the first being for my time machine, second for my raw image backups. So then it goes to edits, and then to exports. So that pretty much includes printing, sending emails, anything that I myself or the client is looking for. So next up I'm going to show you my folder structure. So go into Finder, Pictures. So right now I don't have anything in my job, but obviously that's where I'm going to be housing my client's work. Uh, Lightroom is for my catalogs, so just open up there. Uh, the PI, that's going to be for my personal images. I haven't put, ended up putting any up there. So school images. I have all my folders labeled by assignments numbers, excluding the exercise files and the school raw backups. So just for an example, let's go ahead and open the exposure guide. For my two series of exposure guides, I have them set at n minus 1 to n plus 4. So that, I found that was the easiest way for me to label them. In the future, however, I do have a different file naming convention that I had made up for myself. And that's this one right here. So basically it includes the year, the month, the day, the identification of it, and then followed by the location or the client's last name. So for example here, it's 2013, June 12th, it's a trip, and it's to Japan. Next up is going to be my importing presets and my metadata presets. Sorry, that's the wrong thing. There it is. So now I'll just go down to import here. Just pick any source, I guess. So if I'm just adding, I have it set up as render previews one to one, build smart previews so it's easy for on the go access, and then don't import it suspected duplicates. But if I go to copy as DNG, which I normally would do, for metadata, I have my preset right here. And this is just what I have filled out personally. So just pretty basic, nothing too special. You can just pause the video if you want to see any more. Then I have down here where I'm going to save it into, the other folder outside of Lightroom. So next up is probably the bulk of this video and that is my rating system. So we'll just get out of this import menu here. So the way I have it set up now isn't really going to be the way I have it set up in the future, but I don't have a lot of my own personal images or any client's work at the moment, so I had to do something to show how how different colors and ratings play a part in, in Lightroom. So I just went ahead to this attribute tab up here and personally right now I have the yellow set up for my exercise files from lynda.com so if I just click this yellow here that's all it's going to show is just the pictures from the exercise files. Now if I just click the red here which I set the red to my school images so that's going to show those there. And then of course we can just click it off and then it'll just show all the images. So yeah, like I said, right now that's not what it's that's what it is. It's not going to be like that in the future. What it's going to be like in the future is these here. So for color labels, no label it's going to be not reviewed. Red is for clients, yellow test shots, green for school, blue personal photos, and purple for street photography. Yeah, street photography has its own thing because it's one of my favorite types of photography and I plan on doing a lot of it. So next up is going to be the star system. So that there, I'll just click one star. I don't really have anything set for that right now. Two stars is this here, just my depth of field assignment workshop. And it's two stars because 
I'm going to review it later. I don't. I'm not really happy with them to be honest, and I kind of want to reshoot them, just for my own personal self. And then three stars, my exposure assignment. For three stars, me for me that would be save. So I'm going to be saving these ones as a reference. And then five stars, my depth of field assignment. The photos that I chose because I probably ended up taking over 20 photos, so of course I had to narrow them down to the ones that I liked. The fifth one isn't here, just because I wasn't sure if I wanted to actually keep that one or not. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pull up a quick little list I made here. So yeah, stars, no stars, not yet reviewed. One star is toss, two stars is review again later, three stars save, four stars network, and five stars portfolio and network. So by network, of course, I mean things like Flickr and and just social media, get the pictures out there. And next is flags. So, just back to school images here. There's only two sets of photos that I actually put flags on. The first being white is for saved photos, my exposure guide. And the black star black flags would be for these photos here, my depth of field workshop, because like I said, I'm not happy with them, I want to reshoot them. So I'm thinking that they're gonna be garbage. So now one of the last things I'm going to show you is my keyword keywords, collections, and smart collections. So we're gonna start off with the keywords. So for keywording, I just went back to my regular school images library. So we're going to go to command F and then the one keyword that I have set for this example is depth of field and then it's showing my depth of field workshop in class and my depth of field assignment here. So that's all I have set right now. More will be set later. Now as far as collections go I have a collection for my exposure exposure guides, both series, and then a schoolwork collection with everything but the exposure guides because I'm not really considering that schoolwork because I'm probably going to be using it in my professional career as well. So, so the schoolwork here, and then my smart collections, there's colored red, so that's pretty much all my schoolwork, labeled five stars, the past month, recently modified, video files without keywords, so that's everything except for the depth of field ones that I showed you, and school, there's nothing. So now as an added benefit, I'm just going to show you how I import. I showed you my presets, and now I'm going to show you it in action. So I just inserted my SD card, I'm going to click import, no name. So here's all my photos on my SD card. Now let's see which one we should use for this experiment. Um, I'll just use one here of my nephew. So we're just going to import this image here actually. We'll say we'll do this. Hold shift, and I'm going to take all these images from his birthday party. And then I have my metadata set here, my copyright. All this looks good, smart previews, second copy, because we're copying as a DNG. And then we'll go down here to, I don't want to put it in school images, so we're going to go back to pictures and then we'll go to personal images and put them there and that's gonna take a little while I will be back when it's done okay so let's just check and see if it's finished and yep it is let's just check one of these out <laughs> isn't that adorable so there's one thing I forgot to mentioned while I was importing and that was this import preset down here 
Digital Import Algonquin. That's the preset I have. And the other thing was to make sure all the boxes that of the ones that I wanted to import were selected and the ones that I don't want to import were not selected. And that's pretty much it. That's my Lightroom workflow. Um, over time, as I start putting my own images on, then I'm assuming that it's going to get a lot better, a lot more organized, and a lot more efficient. Anyways, thank you. I know that that was probably almost torturous, but thank you.